Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in today's video we're going to do a very, very, very simple little project. Uh, this might be the simplest thing I've done on my YouTube channel. But earlier this week I was over at my sister sister's house. Uh, uh, some of you probably heard me mention my uh, brother-in-law passed away a little over a year ago now, about, about 15 months ago I guess now. And I had gone through, uh, she had told me to go through uh, and look for various things, see if there was anything over there I could use. Uh, as a matter of fact, his son told me first, uh, you know, there's a metal, scrap metal pile over, pile over here. If there's anything you can use in it, uh, come and get it. Uh, as it turns out, that son, my nephew, passed away just six months after his father did. But I was over at my sister's house uh, earlier this week, and while she was going to pick her grandson up from uh, from school, I was just walking around the yard, and I always walked back by that uh, scrap metal pile, scrap metal metal rack, and see if I spot anything else in there I can use. Last time I was around that pile was back during the summer, and uh, late summer, and the wasp got after me. Uh, but before the wasp got after me, I spotted a, a nice old snake. Uh, it turns out it's just a king snake, but he was have, uh, hanging out on that metal pile. So I kind of let it go for a while, but uh, as I say, I was back over there early, uh, earlier this week, and I spotted this piece of square tubing right here, uh, basically receiver tubing. Uh, somebody made a stand for it, but I thought to myself, now that's just probably going to be the right size uh, for my vise that I've got in a receiver on the side of my welding table. If that's the same size receiver metal, I could put a, about a third of this, it don't need to be the whole piece, I could put about a third of it on my outside metal table and then I could just move that vise back and forth. I don't want to leave a vise out in the weather. But that will likely be an upcoming video. But laying right beside of that was this piece of three-quarter inch, what started out as three-quarter inch uh, round stock. It is completely rusted. Uh, somebody has used it uh, as a drive pin at some time. Both ends of it are mushroomed out. And I said, you know, I've always got useful piece of round stock. So I picked that up. And what we're going to do today is clean this up. I got no idea what kind of metal it is. I'm sure it's a, a piece of coal roll. But uh, we're going to clean that up and make a pin for this simple little clevis. Now, if I didn't have a lathe and a mill and this little hobby machine shop set up, I'd take a half inch bolt, put through there, maybe drill it, maybe one a little bit longer, drill a hole in that side and uh, put a pin in or either even put a nut with it. But I got all this equipment out here and I like to use it. And it might be entertaining to see just what can be done with a piece of uh, rusted old, uh, like I say, probably cold roll material. So let's turn over to the lathe now and turn it down. All right, let's... Uh... Let's get our piece mounted in the chuck, and we're only going to need, uh, I don't know, a couple inches there. We want some hanging out, enough to put a pin through this end. Let's come out right along there. Alright, mounted in the chuck, but it's hanging out the other end of my uh, headstock here on the, on the lathe. Let me bring the camera around and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do on this side. Not long after I got this lathe, I made this little spider to go on the back of it. This is simply screwing on, screwed on to the end of the uh, uh, spindle. And I drilled and tapped for four quarter inch bolts. And we're going to use those much like you would use a, much like you would a four jaw chuck. But it doesn't have to be 
real precise. All right, I'm going to tighten that down just till it touches. And we're going to do the same thing at 90 degrees. Just till it touches. Now, obviously, I can mount a dial indicator on this and get this dialed in exactly. But that's not necessary for what I'm doing here today. I just don't want this piece to go wild uh, in it. You know, and go to sling it from one side to the other. All right, we're going to start out and just lay out about how much we want to um, want to clean up here. We want about a half inch sticking out at the end. Maybe that should three eighths there. Clean the shoulder up. This we're going to just try to, or start with. We're just going to try to clean up the mushroom. Now we'll see if we can clean up the entire length of what we're going to need. Alright, that's pretty much cleaned it up. That, uh, this point on, on the insert, it was about ready, well it was ready to be uh, uh, exchanged. And that rust kind of done it in. So we're going to face off the end first and then I'll turn a new point out on the insert. All right, I'm going to index the next point around on this. And bring you guys right back. All right, I got a new point indexed on the uh, insert. Let's come up. I'm going to zero out the DRO right there. We want a half inch sticking out for the pin to go through. Then the clevis itself is 1.75. So that's two and a quarter. All right. Carry stop. I'm sure if you watch my previous videos, you've seen me always set that. That's just our our stop. So let's make a another pass on this and then we'll get our measurement. It's going to take, I don't know, about 40 thousandths on this first pass. All right, I don't like that drag that's leaving on there. So what I'm going to do is actually put a center in, take the drill chuck, and that's not leaving a very good finish. So this is a piece of mystery metal that uh, it's not cleaning up all that well. It, well, it's cleaning up, but it's kind of ragging it. Of course, now we're going to take our center drill out. Oh, excuse me. And put our live center in. Now let's see if we can get any butter cut. All right. I just realized y'all can't see much there. But that did a much better cut. Let me get the uh, camera where you can see a little better. All right, maybe I got you a little better angle. That's still very gummy. So before I try to take a measurement on that, I'm going to take a piece of emery cloth and clean that up a little bit. And we're wanting a diameter of 550,000. And we got 685. That's 135 thousandths that we want to turn down to so I'll zero out my x-axis right here. I'm going to try taking a little bit more of a cut. I got some more to go there so I'm going to stop that cut and come back to it. That water chips right there was worrying me. 
I think you can probably see down in the bottom of the picture now the carriage stop I was talking about. Alright, so this should be about the last 20 thousandths here. Alright, let's see what our measurement is. That looks like about 580. So we still need about another 30 thousandths. Alright, let's back everything out of the way and try it now and see if, see if that works and see if this is going to be, see if this is going to be an, enough of a shoulder right here. That definitely needs uh, some cleanup though. That's, that piece of mystery metal is extremely gummy. I'll just make myself a mental note not to use that for anything else other than a, a simple pin like this. And it looks like this clevis might be might be twisted a little, so let's take another forty thousandths off of that. That looks like a clean finish with it turning like that, but when I stop the rotation it it obviously doesn't appear that uh, that clean and shiny anymore. I think before I try to go with uh, the emery. Oh yeah, and I think this will be a plenty enough shoulder right up here. All right, I got the carriage stuff out of the way now, and I'm going to clean up just a little bit more of that outside. We'll put a little chamfer on this end and just a little bit on this shoulder. Now we'll put our parting tool on. Alright, before we get too deep in there, we'll put our chamfer tool back in. Alrighty, I'll fish that out of the drink, then meet you over at the mill, and we're going to drill a hole through the end uh, for the uh, keeper pin. Okay, I'm over at the mill now, and before we start drilling for our pin, let me comment on what you're seeing in the background here. I've had several folks to ask me in the comments what the bubbles were behind my uh, mill. Was that a shower curtain? It is, in fact, a shower curtain. Uh, my computer and monitors, several other sensitive items are on the other side of this curtain. And I don't like to sling oil or chips over there, so I just pull this curtain out. It, it can pull back out of the way. All right. What we want to do now is drill a hole in this end of our pin for this uh, hitch pin uh, to go into. I'm going to use a couple V blocks to hold it in place. We'll take these V blocks and push our pin through and we're using the small V on the block just to keep the two uh, V blocks from uh, bottoming out on each other. Okay, let's take the uh, edge finder now. And we'll pull that in on the Y until it just kicks off. And we'll zero out the Y. Come to the other side and go until it just kicks out. Alright, now we'll go Y one half on the DRO. And then bring this back to zero. 
and we can lock down our Y axis. Now let's come off the end. All right, just kicked off. So we'll zero out the X axis on the DRO. Now I know that what I'm doing right now is repetitive to a lot of you, but I've picked up a lot of new subscribers over the last month or so, so this may be the first time some of you are seeing how an edge finder works. But you saw that kick off. Now this probe right here is 200 thousandths thick, and we were on the edge. So let's come in 100 thousandths, half that. So now our center axis, Z axis here, is directly in line with the edge of our piece. We left a half inch hanging over here. Uh, so let's take half of that, 250 thousandths. So that'll give me a total of 350 on the DRO. And now we can lock the Y down. All right, let's put our center drill in. We're centered on the Y and we're 250 thousandths in on the X. Just get a center drill started. And of course that center drill is short and very hard, hard material. So it doesn't wobble or walk like a drill bit will. We need a 5 30 seconds hold. All right, I'm going to carry the pin over to the dirty side of the tin barn and deburr this on the Scotch sprite wheel. Then we'll meet back at the uh, workbench and do a quick recap on this simple little project. Okay, folks, as I said at the beginning of this video, this was a simple, very simple project. Uh, uh, again, might be the simplest thing I've ever done here on the channel. Taking a piece of rusty old mystery metal and turning it into a, in this case, a clevis pin with a nice shoulder on that end, a hold for our hitch pin. Simple project, but I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next video.